Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at adding and subtracting like terms in the General 2 Maths course. So first of all, what is a term? That's not a bad thing to start with. So for example, we might have something that looks like this. Uh, 3a plus 4a minus 2x plus 3. Now, this is what we refer to as an algebraic expression. Okay, an algebraic expression. An expression is what is made up of algebraic terms. So for example, 3a is what we refer to as an algebraic term. Therefore, several one or more terms makes up an algebraic expression, or should I say two or more terms makes up an algebraic expression. So when we're adding and subtracting like terms, we want to look at the terms that are the same. So in this case, they have the same letter or the same variable or pronumal you might want to call. So for example, we have the 3a and we have the plus 4a. And you'll notice that I always put the sign and I include that in front of it. Uh, there is a plus here, a plus in front of the 3a, but obviously doesn't need to have it there. We've also got the minus 2x. That's one term. There's no other x's there. And then I've got a plus 3 which is another term on its own. So adding and subtracting like terms means I can only add or subtract terms that have the same letters. Remembering that the letters for algebra represent an unknown number, and it's simply the same number in this two case. For example, I could have three lots of one number plus four lots of the same number, which means I've got seven lots of that particular number. Then I've got two lots of another number plus three altogether. So that means I have 7a subtract 2x plus 3, and I cannot do anything else with that. That's as far as I can go. That is pretty much what it means to add and subtract like terms. Now, other more challenging ones you might get are things that look like this. You might have um, 2a squared plus 3a minus 4a squared plus 5a. So how many terms do I have in this expression? Well, I have four terms, and which are the like terms? Now, some people might say they are all like terms. The issue is, when we look at the a, I've actually got a squared, not just a. So let's say, for example, a equal two. What I've actually, well, actually, no, I'll do three, sorry. I've actually got three squared, which makes that actual term nine, as opposed from this term, would actually just be the three. So you can kind of see what I mean there, that you have to add or subtract exactly the same term. So a squared and a, they are completely and utterly different. I've then got the 3a, and I've got another 5a there. So once again, you can see that I'm including the sign in front of it. So if I want to simplify this, okay, we've got 2a squared, subtract 4a squared, which is minus 2a squared. I've got three a's plus five a's, so we've got eight a's, and it's positive, therefore I've got negative two a squared plus eight a. The only other one that you might want to be careful of is when you have things that might look like this, it could be three uh, x w plus two w x. Now, I know I've just said to you previously that it has to be exactly the same, but see how these two letters are next to each other? Okay, they are actually identical because I've got a times holding them in. Therefore, if I've got this, I could actually rewrite it as 2xw and therefore making them the same. Therefore, we've got 5xw's or 5wx's. Remember the old saying, 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. It doesn't matter which way they're around, it still gives the same answer. Therefore, wx and xw are the same. So a quick introduction on adding and subtracting like terms, but you should know how to do this already anyway. Okay, so let's have a look at this question. We've got 5x squared plus 6x minus 3x squared minus x. So I'm going to put a square around the x squareds. Again, I'm making sure I keep the negative in front of it. So we've got... Uh, 5x squared minus 3x squared, well that equals 2x squared. Then I've got the 6x minus 1x, which is positive 5x, and thus I have my simplified answer. Awesome. Okay, now this one we've got some fractions. These are slightly different. Before I actually go through these particular ones, just remember how you do normal fractions. For example, if I had, um, let's say for example, uh, one fifth plus two fifths, what would that answer be? That answer would be 
three fifths. As long as the denominator is the same, we simply add the numerators. Okay, if I had one half plus one quarter, what we would do, we would change the first fraction to something over four. So times the bottom by two and top by two, make it two over four plus one over four. That can now be added together to give three over four. And then the last kind of example you might have is a half plus a third. In this case, you might remember getting a common denominator and saying that bottom by three, top by three, which makes three sixths, the bottom by two, top by two, which makes two sixths, which now makes the five sixths there. Okay, so you can sort of see where we're going with this, hopefully, because these questions here, so I'm just going to get rid of that, um, these questions here are all algebraic fractions, and they actually work exactly the same as those fractions that I've just showed you. Apologies for that, I'm just going to get rid of it. Okay, so, full A, you might want to uh, pause this and have a crack at this and see how you go. Okay, so I'll recognize for A, the denominators are already the same, so I'm simply going to add the top. So 2x plus x is 3x all over 5. That's it. One nice quick way. B, let's have a look at this one now. We've got 7m over minus, sorry, 7m over 3 minus 2m over 3. Well, they're both over 3, so I didn't need to change. So 7 take away 2 is 5m. So 5m over 3, that's my nice answer. Don't write these as, that is an improper fraction. Don't write 1 and 2 th um, thirds m. It just gets confusing um, and it's not particularly accurate. C, now this is the one where you might notice that the denominators are not the same. The smaller one does not even go into the bigger one. So what we might do is choose a number that they both go into. I'm going to choose 12. You could also choose 24 if you wished. Um, the smallest one will be the better one. So in order to make the denominators the same, I'm going to times the bottom by uh, f sorry, 3 for the first one, top by 3, hence making it 3y over 12. The bottom one by 2, top one by 2, 5y times 2 is 10y. Therefore, making this answer as, uh, oops, I've got my y there, 13y over 12, and that's my answer. Now we get to the last one. Let's see if you get this one right. Okay, the, uh, the bottom one actually goes into six. So I'm gonna simply times the bottom one by two and the top one by two to make four a on six minus a on six, which now equals three a on six. But you might recognize this time that three goes in the top, three goes in the bottom. So three goes in the three once, three goes in the six twice. I'm left with one a all over two as my final answer. Um, and any other question I would like to just show you, um, particularly for these ones, I mean, they will get some more challenge ones later on. Okay, so this will be simplified, just a bit more challenging. We're gonna do a over six uh, minus three a plus four over five. So this is a bit more challenging because I've just used two terms on top here and this is a minus here, so it will cause a few issues. So you might look at this and go, okay, I'm gonna put them both over 30. So the bottom one by five, top one by five, bottom one by six, top one by six, remembering that you need to do the whole thing by six, which gives you 5a minus, well, six times three is 18a, and then we've got six times four is 24. Now you'll notice that they're separated by a subtract, which means we're subtracting the 18a, but we're also subtracting the 24. So actually this is what I've got. 5a minus 18a minus 24 all over 30. I'm now going to subtract the a's. Five take away 18. Well, that's going to be negative 13a minus 24 all over 30. Um, <clears throat> I can't cancel it down now because I could, I was thinking maybe two goes into those two, but it doesn't go into 13, so nothing else goes into all three. Therefore, that is my final answer. Again, just be careful about this negative. Um, this one here, think about it like this way. Okay, the negative um, is working on both those terms there. Okay, that's pretty much in a nutshell, um, our adding and subtracting. Hopefully that make, made sense. Give it a go and have a crack at, I believe, uh, exercise 3A from your textbook. Have a great day, guys.